check. I thought they did a really good job. Um, what we expected them to do, um, they played fast, physical, and aggressive. Um, and I uh, was really proud of those guys. And then always, as we say, uh, the biggest jump from uh, of improvement is from game one to game two. And so there's some things that uh, they're, they're, they're going to even show even better, we feel, uh, this next week, uh, this next game coming up because uh, of the improvement that's going to happen. But overall, I feel really, really good about those guys. What do they need to clean up? Um, just some things um, that schematically that we that we saw that for communication purposes, and, and it, actually we have more coverage on some of the things than we probably needed, like three guys as opposed to two guys, that type of stuff. And we can use you somewhere else. We need three on one. You know, we can have two on one, but not three on. We don't need three on one. Yep. Is that kind of what happened on that touchdown pass that he threw? Like both Mangum and Cal were kind of in that area chasing him. Yeah, that that one was guys. This guy out of their zones. This guy was positioned a little bit, and uh, that is a cleanup situation. They saw it like, got it, got it. So it's a quick fix. We saw it even on the, you know, as it happened when they came to the sideline. You supposed to do this, da da da, and they got it. So uh, that's 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 going to help. You know? They're, they're accelerating now. They're, they do a really good job. Those two guys work well together. Um, a little analogy I use with the guys, I say the, the safeties are the parents and the corners are the kids. So the parents got to be on the same page, and then they tell the kids what to do. That's what they're, and so, and they're, they're good parents. The uh, tackling of the early in the game was shocking. There was a really good tackle, but it seemed like it improved as it went on uh, during the game. Is that what you saw? And what did you think of uh, Morin? You good? Uh, I mean, I'll get it one of these things. Yeah, he, you know, he goes by skis. You can say skis. It's easier to say skis or my eye. I thought he did well. I thought he did well. We're, we're glad that he's here with us. Um, did a good job for us coming in in our third down package. And uh, I, I thought the guys flew around. We, we constantly talking about talking to them about running through contact which is one of my favorite things of football. So you, the guy's going full speed and through contact. And uh, we had several guys doing that. It was very encouraging and fired me up. In terms of the crescendo of the season, you play so somewhat one-dimensional team. You know, you're kind of growing into what's a couple weeks from now. And you, you guys are obviously familiar with Penix and that watching. I'm wondering if, if that's a helpful trajectory for the young group to sort of build to the point that you're ready for uh, absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, all all the games that we play, we take very very seriously. We're not looking forward to you know past anybody. Um, so that was a good team. Uh, quarterback was a good player. Dad, former NFL player, uh, uh, Emmanuel. I'm talking about number three for CMU. And so he's a good player. And that was a that was a really good um, test for us. And I had to come play. And just like this coming week, Richmond, another team that we got to take very seriously. They're used to winning. They play hard. Tough and physical, well coached. So that's that's what we're focused on. Um, and all these teams, in some ways, a lot of them give you some of the same things, as uh, far as schematically, as, uh, scheme is concerned. And so uh, it definitely helps us out to continue to get better and better every week. You've had some young secondaries that eventually became great secondaries, and I'm wondering what traits you see from this group now that gives you hope that that will be their their place. Um, uh, kind of some of the stuff I already said. They're they're they're, they're smart. Um, they, they have great attention to detail, and they will run through contact. They will run through contact. I love guys that run through contact, that don't slow down. You know what I mean? Um, and I, I tell them all the time, the Bible says it's better to give than to receive. So go give it to them. You know, don't be receiving. Go give. Let's go give. That's in the Bible. With that being said, um, what do you see from uh, Richmond and just kind of what problems they pose as far as uh, excuse me, their passing? Uh, they they they've shown a spread attack. Uh, they weren't as spread as they uh, uh, the Saturday as they were in the uh, last year. Got a new quarterback, um, but a big boy that can that can run. 
um, throws the ball pretty well down the field. And so um, got good receivers. Uh, one receiver in particular uh, has the, uh, the record in the 200 meters from his high school. So uh, they got football players. Uh, and Virginia, five. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So they, um, and I know numbers. Excuse me about the names. I definitely know numbers. Yeah, but, um, but um, they, uh, you know, that Virginia area is a lot, real good football. And they attract good players there at Richmond. So they do a good job. They're, they, they're used to winning. And so they're going to come in here fired up, I'm sure, and ready to go. But we'll be ready to go also. Wrong about this, but it seems back in your day, you used to do drills where you line people up and you leave with your head and you tackle them, and that was good tackle. Well, not with your head. Now, I, 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 yeah, well, and, 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 and to be honest with you, um, from growing up playing, playing the sport 1975 to coaching it now, I, I was all, a good coach, and I had good coaches, and they would always say, Keep your head up. They would always tell us to keep our don't spear. You cannot duck your head. That's the one thing that scares me on the football field. A guy goes and ducks his head. I don't like seeing that. I tell the players that never duck your head. See the target so you can hit the target, right? So always keep your head up. That's that's some dangerous stuff and don't want to see that. In the bigger scheme, is it harder to play defensive back today than it used to be with the Lord of the Um, it, it, In some ways, in some ways, especially with the, the fast-paced offenses and things like that, um, even just like 10 years ago when we had – you know, Quiz and Trey, we still, they weren't going so fast that we couldn't have uh, Quiz into the boundary and Trey to the field. They could always get to the boundary in the field with no problem. Now you can't do that. You got to be left, right. You're left, right because people line up so fast and, and, and all that kind of stuff. So you just stand left, right. And so it has changed in that way. Um, uh, the physicality is still the physicality. People still want to run the football. You know, you win games by running the football, stopping the run, uh, uh, no turnovers and getting turnovers. So that's, that's still the fundamentals of football, but it has changed, uh, Fred. You mentioned the 10 years. Does it seem like 10 years? No. No, that's fast, man. How about to you? Not to me. That, that was pretty fast. I mean, it, it was quick because I can remember it like yesterday. Um, you always remember the, the great things, uh, the great, the fun seasons, and that was a really fun season. Yeah, we were, we've been stressing, and even even before this year, we've been stressing the ball, uh, the ball, the ball, the ball. Get the ball, get the ball. We got uh, one turnover on uh, on Saturday, and uh, and coach was talking to guys about um, the percentage of winning when you get turnovers. Plus one is seventy percent chance. Plus two, and they know all this stuff too. It's eighty plus three. It's ninety plus four. It's plus ninety-five percent chance to win the game. And so we've really been stressing the ball even more. I, if you can say even more, uh, to go after the ball, go after the ball, get the ball, the ball, the ball, the ball. Give our offense as many possessions as they can get. Do you guys chart near interceptions at all? I mean, because, I mean, you know, you only had I think one in the secondary. Yes, we do. We do. We, we go into practice saying we need to get this many uh, turnovers or takeaways a day, be it a cause from against getting a fumble or, or a pick or whatever it may be. But we're, we're, we do chart it. Yes, we do. I mean, like, in-game, like, do you chart, like, how close you guys have been and, like, we need, we should have had. Yes, had yes, 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 yes. Matter of fact, um, it, you know, when, when we miss an interception that we feel like we got hands on it, we should have called it. We don't count it as a PBU. We count it as a missed opportunity. So that's a minus on your grade sheet. Yeah, that's a minus. We want we want the ball. You have an opportunity to catch the ball. Catch the ball. Yeah. Can I be honest with you? I, I didn't even watch the game, Washington game. I just, I just, I'm dead serious. Okay, so we got Richmond. Let's focus on Richmond. That's where we are right now. And let's go. Let's go. We'll be ready. Or we'll be prepared. How about that? We'll be prepared. Another big question class. Do any of those guys look kind of ready to contribute? 
Well, the one guy that did get some time was Chance Rucker. He played for us. Um, the other guys are coming. As the season progresses, you know, we're going to see how they continue to get better themselves because they are getting better. And then we'll just see if, if at need, we'll, we'll, we'll use them. Pete, you've been around here nearly 40 years. You've laid a lot of guys out when you play. I know that Alante isn't your guy. But have you ever seen somebody get carried off on the board, be down like that, run off the board into the locker room, come back and return to pick No. That's all I'm going to say about that. No, I, but, you know, the, our medical people, you know, they, they looked at, after him, and I'm sure. Because I don't even know the whole situation, not even my guy, like you said. So, uh, but for me, have I ever seen that? Uh, I have it that I can remember. Like, that's 40 years, like you just said, that's a long time. It could have happened, but I don't remember. So, um, with the comfortable lead, there was a lot of second straighters that got on the field. The safety stayed on there. Is it because the young guys you want to pitch as many reps as possible? Exactly right exactly why we did that. And I even went to Coach Tucker in the, in the game while they were still going out there. I said, hey, Coach, I'm leaving them two guys out there. They're young. They still need to get it. He said, absolutely. Absolutely. So exactly right. Well observant. How's it been working with Jim Salvato? You guys meshing ideas and techniques and you know, just working alongside It's been going great. Uh, Jim and I have been knowing each other for a long time. Um, before he was at, at the Bills even. He was at Syracuse, Princeton, and uh, he used to come up here and we would talk ball. And he came up here at least, at least three times in the offseason. And that's how we got to know. He hit me up, hey, I'd like to talk some ball with you, blah, blah, blah. And we've been, we've been friends ever since. And so even up and through last season, during the season, he'll text me, beat so-and-so. And then the next day, I might say, beat the Jets or whatever. There's some text messages during the season. So he and I have been uh, friends for a long time. And uh, it's, been, it's been really good. Uh, Fortunately, we had a lot of guys that were that were playing there um, and, uh, and and have done a good job for us and gotten better. So it's just accelerate their the process for them. One more thing on Salgado. What, is, what do you see him bring? What does he bring as a coach to the corner? I, I think he brings. Um, um, the, first of all, he brings just coming from the NFL. So everybody want to go to the NFL, right? He's six years at the at the Buffalo Bills, and they play great defense. So he brings that, so they, 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 they respect him just off of that alone. And then just uh, being able to show some of the things that they did at the Bills on film that we've been able to incorporate in, the, in what we do here. And so it's, it's been really good. And uh, sometimes you can say things to guys, but you know, some people you know, see and understand better by watching stuff as opposed to somebody just telling me something. And so you've been able to see Bills film and them actually doing some of the things that he's been talking about. And I think it's really made a big difference. Did you ever think you stayed in football 40 years? I just told you, man, 1975, man. I Only since 1975, I haven't missed playing or coaching football except one year. 1997, that was my first year because I was just got done playing ball. I was done. So the fall of 97, the only time I wasn't either coaching or playing football. So it's been my life. That's what I've been doing. I don't know anything else. So. What did you do in 1997? Did you tell me 97, what did I do? I watched a lot of Sunday Ticket. I, I do. A lot of Sunday Ticket. And funny thing, um, uh, a former, a former uh, high, assistant high school basketball coach, when I played basketball in high school, he, he was the assistant coach. He had a head job at a, at a city school in Cincinnati. He was the head coach. He said, man, can you, you come be my, var, my uh, ninth grade head coach? So my first coaching job was a ninth grade head basketball coach. And then after that, I, I just started coaching from there, football and basketball in the high school ranks, and then uh, went to college. And yeah, 20 years ago, 2003, I went down to LSU with Coach Saban and been in college ever since. You mentioned about guys that tackle through contact. Just don't break Run through contact. Run through contact. There we go. Yep. Uh, it's a fence looks like he does that a little bit. Yes. Can you talk about how he expanded on using him closer to the line of scrimmage to the dime, almost to the linebacker area. Yeah, that skill set to exactly. Yeah, and that's a lot of what he did when he was in high school. He was near the line of scrimmage a lot. And so um, we, and he has the, the, the body type that we like at the dime area. So um, uh, and he loves playing down there near close because he wants to be near the action. And so we get that's the opportunity to get us to get him to, near the action, closer to the action. H. Tater made some aggressive plays. What do you see in him that tells you he has a high ceiling? He's a competitor. Uh, you know, Dylan, and he'll tell you, and his high school uh, defensive back coach will tell you, 
when they put him on defense in high school, because he, he played running back and defensive back, when they put him on defense, they just said, play man and cover the guy. So he didn't get a whole lot of DB teaching, if that makes sense. So I'm glad that he came early last year, and then he, he's gotten better and better, and he's a competitor. He competes. And you love a guy, you know he's going to give you everything he got when he's out there. Like he's not going to leave it any. He's gonna, not going to leave anything left on the field. He's going he, I mean, to leave it all on the field, excuse me. And that's what he is, a competitor. I love that guy. Competes. And he's tough, physical, aggressive. Um, yeah. Like the secondary. Thank you, guys. All right. Y'all have a good day.